Hey guys, welcome back to eGate Tutor. In this video, let's work out few practice questions from maximum principle strain theory from the topic theories of failure. Question 1 is, a bolt is subjected to an axial load of 10 kN and a transverse shear load of 5 kN. The cross-sectional area of the bolt is 250 mm square and the yield strength of the material of the bolt in tension is 230 MPa. The factor of safety according to St. Venet's theory is Assume Poisson's ratio mu is equal to 0.1. So this is a numerical answer type question. Let's proceed to the solution. It is given that the axial load is P is equal to 10 kN. So from that, let us calculate the axial stress which is P by A. Let's convert the 10 kN force into Newton by multiplying with 10 power 3 and area is given as 250 mm square. So when we simplify that, we get the axial stress as 40 MPa. Similarly, let us calculate the shear stress which is induced due to the transverse shear load on the bolt. So we get the shear stress is equal to 5 into 10 power 3 which is the force divided by area is 250 mm square. So the shear stress turns out to be 20 MPa. The next step is to calculate the principal stresses for this type of loading. So that can be calculated using the formula sigma 1 comma 2 is equal to sigma by 2 plus or minus under root sigma by 2 whole square plus tau square. We have sigma is equal to 40 megapascal and tau is equal to 20 megapascal. So when we substitute that and simplify, we get the principal stresses as sigma 1 is equal to 48.28 megapascal and sigma 2 is equal to minus 8.28 megapascal. Now, according to St. Venet's theory, the failure condition in terms of principal stresses can be written as sigma 1 minus mu sigma 2 is equal to sigma yt where FOS is the unknown here. Sigma yt is given as 230 megapascal. So when we substitute all the corresponding values, we have this equation and from this equation, the only unknown is factor of safety. So when we simplify this equation, we get the factor of safety to be 4.69. Let's look at question number 2. What is the failure condition according to maximum principle strain theory when a structural member is subjected to triaxial state of stress system assuming that the maximum principle strain is epsilon 1, factor of safety being FOS, Poisson's ratio is mu, Young's modulus of the material is E, and yield strength of the standard specimen in simple tension test being sigma y. So those are the four options. So from this question, it is to be understood that we have to write down the failure condition according to maximum principle strain theory in the case of three dimensional loading. Let's proceed to the solution. From the question, it is clear that epsilon one is the maximum principle strain. Therefore, according to maximum principle strain theory, the failure condition becomes epsilon 1 should be greater than or equal to epsilon y for the material to fail. Now, for this equation, to the left hand side, if we apply the three dimensional Hooke's law and to the right hand side, if we apply the simple Hooke's law, this failure condition changes to sigma 1 by e minus mu into sigma 2 by e minus mu into sigma 3 by e should be greater than or equal to sigma y by e. Now from this equation, if we take 1 by e in both left hand side and right hand side common, this equation changes to sigma 1 minus mu into sigma 2 plus sigma 3 greater than or equal to sigma y by e into FOS. Remember that in this equation, factor of safety is also included. Now we can cancel out e and e in both the left hand side and right hand side. If we do so, we get the resultant expression as sigma 1 minus mu into sigma 2 plus sigma 3 greater than or equal to sigma y by factor of safety. That matches with option D. Let's proceed to question number 3. If sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the maximum and minimum principal stresses respectively and if mu is the Poisson's ratio of the material, then according to the maximum principal strain theory, so when you look at the options, we have to decide from the maximum principal strain theory concept that whether the failure condition includes the maximum principal stress and minimum principal stress or anything else. Let's proceed to the solution. It is given that sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the principal stresses. So from that we can assume that the material is subjected to biaxial state of stress system. In other words, the material is subjected to two dimensional loading. 
So for a two-dimensional loading case, the failure criteria according to maximum principal strain theory in terms of principal stresses and yield strength of the material in tension along with factor of safety can be represented in this way. Sigma 1 minus mu into sigma 2 is equal to sigma yt by FOS. Now from this expression, it is clear that both the maximum principal stress sigma 1 and the minimum principal stress sigma 2 are included in the design considerations. Therefore, the correct option to this question is both B and C. Remember that this is a new question type which will be introduced in gate 2021. This is called as multiple select question where one or more than one option is correct. Let's move on to question number four. If the principal strains at a particular point are 0.0024 mm per mm, 0.0023 mm per mm and 0.0034 mm per mm and the yield strength of the material in tension is 230 MPa, Young's modulus of the material being 125 GPa, the factor of safety according to St. Venet's theory is. So those are the four options and we are given with principal strains in three dimensions and yield strength of the material in tension along with its Young's modulus. So we have to determine the factor of safety using the St. Venet's theory. In other words, maximum principal strain theory. Let's proceed to the solution. We are given with the principal strains which are epsilon 1 is equal to 0.0024 mm per mm, epsilon 2 is equal to 0.0023 mm per mm and epsilon 3 is equal to 0.0034 mm per mm. Now, according to St. Venet's theory, the failure condition should be like the maximum principal strain should reach the yield point of the standard specimen in tension test. Among these three, the maximum principal strain is epsilon 3 because it has the highest value of strain. Therefore, the failure criteria can be epsilon 3 should be greater than or equal to epsilon y for the material to fail. Now, to the right hand side, if we apply the simple Hooke's law along with the factor of safety and substituting epsilon 3 is equal to 0.0034, this equation changes to 0.0034 greater than or equal to sigma yt by e into FOS. We have sigma yt is equal to 230 megapascal and Young's modulus is given as 125 gigapascal. So we have to convert 125 gigapascal into 125 into 10 power 3 megapascal. So when we substitute those values into the above equation, we get this. So from this equation, it is clear that only the factor of safety is unknown. So when we simplify that, we get the factor of safety as 0.5. So it matches with option A. Let's move on to question number 5. The maximum principal strain theory can be applied to. Let's proceed to the solution. From these four options, we can make a note that aluminium is a ductile material. Similarly, ceramics are brittle materials. Cast iron is also a brittle material and copper is a ductile material. Now, it is to be noted that the maximum principal strain theory is only applicable to brittle materials. So among these four materials given in the options, there are only two materials which are brittle in nature, which are ceramics and cast iron. Therefore, the maximum principal strain theory can be applied to both ceramics and cast iron. Therefore, the correct answer to this question is both option B and C. That's all from this video guys. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, share and subscribe to our eGate tutor.